Baldur's Gate 3 is a great game. So with Baldur's Gate 3 getting into the top 3 and 4 on the Steam charts, we're seeing the narrative surrounding the game becoming more and more intense. One of the interesting things about YouTube as a creator is that it tends to tell you where people that are enjoying your videos are coming from. And one of the things that YouTube told me was that a lot of my viewers that were liking and subscribing were coming from Mark Dara's YouTube channel. And I thought, hmm, name seems to ring a bell. So I watched his channel for a bit, and he'd recently done a video that echoes a lot of similar points I made in my Are Big Dev Scamming Us video. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Mike Dara is a Bioware, a former Bioware developer who worked on Dragon Age. And I think he made a lot of interesting points about the current developer controversy that I want to go over in this video. Now, Mark is a much smarter and also more polite guy than me. So I'm going to go over his points and uh, restate them in my own way. See whether I agree or disagree with him. But overall, he's a, a really nice guy who has clearly an amazing um, mind and an experience of, of game design. So it's worth thinking about about his opinions uh, on this issue. So uh, let's get into it. Actually, we're seeing this kind of weird discourse going around the internet. So yeah, Mark, have you just discovered Twitter? I am going to join the pile of discourse with this video. Let's see if I can do it without getting canceled by either side of the conversation. Don't worry, Mark. You're already canceled. You're in one of my videos. And they have been honing their craft and really narrowing in on what they need to make this kind of game. There are some tricks that I think they are using in order to allow the game to allow you to do as much as you can. So Mark starts talking about Larian and something that I covered in my last video, which maybe either people just didn't get it or maybe I didn't put the point correctly. It is very rare that you have a studio, to use modern corporate lingo, as agile as Larian. That is, it's very rare that you have a studio that puts that much time into making a single type of game on a single type of engine in the same way, with the same shaders, the same graphic design, the same APIs, and they don't have a lot of back-end complexity. A lot of people were like, eh, you're saying that it's uh, it's so easy to just make 5e and initial. No, I'm saying that if you know the 5e rule set and you already have a pre-made engine that you're used to working in, it's pretty easy to implement freaking dice rolls and plus and minuses in code. And things like AOE, things like vectors. It's not that hard from a game design perspective if you're an agile studio that does one thing very efficiently. And uh, Mark seems to echo that, albeit he's saying it in a nicer way. Maybe I should become nicer. Sometimes I, th I wonder that. Some choices that allow them to do this. Most of their presentation of conversations is done with canned animation, which looks pretty good. They have made some simplifications in terms of their art style, and all of this comes together into them being able to make a massive amount of content. And I think this is a good series of choices. And I don't think you should be holding any of this against them as a developer. So this is a really embarrassing point. I've been complaining about Baldur's Gate 3 being buggy for quite a while in various videos. And then I realized it's not a bug. The game just looks like crap sometimes. Sometimes textures pop in and out. Sometimes things don't load properly. That's just actually the way the game is. Uh, they, they just kind of cut corners on visual fidelity. And apparently I have been brainwashed too much by playing AAA games. Though that doesn't make that much sense because a lot of indie studios don't have that issue. But yeah, I, I guess, yeah, they did cut some corners to make things more efficient. Uh, in terms of the um, the visual side of things. In, in early access for years. Awesome. That's amazing because it's allowed them to hone what they're doing, to do tons of bug fixing, and allowed them to release a game that, while not bug-free at launch, is still in a pretty good shape off the gate. 
Right, so this is my first point of disagreement. While I agree with Mark, obviously, uh, with his background as a developer, that that would be awesome to be in early access for years. As a consumer, I really don't want to see this repeated over and over. I think that it's a cheat code that certain devs think they can pull off. But for every game that we see succeed this way, we see 20,000 failure cash grabs. And I think in the end, that's going to be more harmful from a consumer rather than a game developer perspective. Uh, one of the things that I'm following up now on my channel is um, Last Epoch. And one of the things about that game is, I mean, it's been in, it's been in early access for, what, four years now, I think. And we, we really need to see some development on that from an ARPG fan base angle. And... Um, I, I really I don't want to see this become the norm, uh, regardless of what everyone's saying about Wilder's Gate. I don't want to see the idea of these huge, big budget titles that are also early access titles. Uh, Boulder's Gate 3 has pulled it off by releasing something that on full release is actually a much better game than the early access version. But that is the 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 you know absolute minority of what tends to happen on early access. But is this? a new standard for RPGs. I don't think it is in the same way that I don't think that Elden Ring was a new standard for RPGs or that Zelda was a new standard for RPGs or Witcher was a new standard for RPGs or Dragon Age Inquisition was a new standard for RPGs. Or So Dragon Age Inquisition was a new standard of something, but probably not for RPGs. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> I should, I should I should stop being so snarky. Anyways, I I agree that it's not a new standard for RPGs. Um, there is a sort of weird cult following surrounding this, but I think one of the things I addressed in the be beginning of this video is that um, Dragon Age, uh, Dragon Age, Boulder's Gate Three is now in the top three or four of the Steam charts. So this is a game that is quote unquote being played by a lot of normies a lot of people that really don't have a lot of experiences in RPGs and they're having a lot of fun and they're getting super hyped about it. Um, so you, you kind of have to allow for, for that. Um, the hype factor is just going to be big anytime you get a game getting such universal appeal. And I think when we see it launch on PlayStation 5 to uh, largely a group of people that have almost no experience of playing games like this, you're going to see the hype even skyrocket further. Um, but uh, Mark does go on now, I think, and he explains more about what he means. Game devs and gamers having two different conversations past each other, and they're not really connecting on what they're trying to say. I think what gamers are saying is, look, it's a game that is a, that is a complete game at launch that is launching with an immense amount of choice. And then game devs are coming and saying, but yes, yes, but they've made compromises on fidelity on game design in order to give that freedom that they were built under special circumstances and gamers are saying i don't care so i haven't heard on any of the people criticizing my views on the game them mention choice i think they just really really like the way larian games make games and i don't like the way larian games make games i think i think that's about about it and then Larian Games used a very expensive IP and a very, very, very well-selling early access launch to make a very, very, very big game. Uh, if anything, the sort of weird factor in this is that Divinity 2 wasn't more of a mainstream success. And I think it wasn't a main, mainstream success due to their failure in marketing it. Uh, and they haven't repeated that. They, they bought a big IP to be able to market it. Um, I don't think there's this gamers talking past. I think gamers just getting exactly what they want and they just don't like the sort of boomer games anymore. I think we're seeing a real audience shift here. Uh, you can see it in the character design and the hypersexuality of the characters and a lot of the controversial politics in the game, which I won't go into here. I think this is more of a shift in taste than anything else. One of the things I can see from my YouTube analytics is the people that hate my videos tend to be under the age of 25, and the people that like my videos tend to be over the age of 40. Um, I think Boulder's Gate 3, in terms of computer gaming, is a real generational zeitgeist shift. Is, in fact, from softwares 
voyage through Demon Souls and Dark Souls and finally Elden Ring to becoming a AAA studio. Like that, I think this is Larian finishing that journey and becoming a AAA studio. This is the final form. This is them in their final form as a AAA studio. But we saw a lot of this same discourse around that time in the Dark Souls 2 and 3 time frame where people were talking about this changing the way that games were going to be built. And that's not really what happened. It was a new kind of game that could exist, and you definitely saw them influencing game development, but it wasn't a radical sea change. And that's, I think, what we'll see. I really, really like um, his comparison of Larian Games to From Software in that they are both independent developers. While FromSoft have worked with PlayStation as a publisher, FromSoft are an independent developer. Larian, as far as I know, have never had an official publisher, at least in modern times, but they are smaller A to AAA studios, a double A to AAA studios, that um, have had these hugely successful games. And one of the, the points Mark makes here that I think is very true, though I don't think he, he, he actually spells out this distinction, so I'll make it here, though I think you would agree. There's a difference between a studio that is independent and a studio that is AAA. Independent is about the relationship you have to your shareholders, your publisher, the overhead you have on deliveries, timelines, the sort of things that anybody that's ran their own business knows about, right? And uh, whether you're A or AAA or ind or indie in the broader colloquial sense when we say indie game, i.e. a small studio, is a different matter. Um, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos as a, as a voice actor, I can sort of guesstimate what the budget for this game would have, would have been in terms of the voice acting, given the quality of the people involved, the amount, the sheer amount of lines, often uh, kind of difficult lines um, for it's a high it's a lot it's, it's more than mo than than a lot of games on its own so i think he, he makes a, a good point here about larian having become a triple a studio uh they definitely are and a lot of people in my my previous video didn't seem to understand that you can be both the triple a studio and independent where what we mean by independent is not having a major publisher hanging over your shoulder such as our beloved overlord activision I also think he's absolutely right. Uh, I don't think Elden Ring changed uh, the way that uh, games will be built. But overall, I think, uh, I mean, I didn't want to include too much of his video here because I don't want to like do a cringe reaction video and I don't want to offend him because he seems like a really nice guy. But uh, I just, I really, I really, I don't know. I connected with the video and I wanted to do something on it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with some more standard, less reaction content in the next couple of days. Overall, you know, if people are enjoying Boulder's Gate 3, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for the CRPG space that people are enjoying it. But I also am a bit frustrated by the response from so many fans of the game that are, <clears throat> I don't want to use 4chan language, but normies, as some of my commenters have said, that there's sort of no... No hesitation, no respect for the fact that they're stepping into a gaming genre that, frankly, a lot of them don't seem to have a lot of experience with. And that, yeah, I mean, the the grognards of the world are going to get cranky. Um, for those of you that don't know, grognards was a phrase that was used to describe Napoleon's old soldiers that then was converted into a phrase to describe people that were conservative about war gaming, tabletop war gaming, and... Um, Dungeons and Dragons, and I feel like we're in a we're in that sort of situation where I'm being a grognard, and Mark probably is a little bit too. But that's just where we're at now, and we'll see where things go. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.